My family is French, and like many French families, I grew up making wine. And do you know, astrophotography has something in common with making wine. Do you know what it is? Patience. Like making a fine wine, the more time you put into it, the better it gets. And you know how you tell if a wine has brewed and aged long enough? Well, there are tools that can tell you things like its acidity, but I never use them. I taste it. Quite simply, because those tools have no idea what we find desirable. The human palate is the best measure of fine taste. Now, astrophotography images happily don't take as long to create as a nice wine, but they do take a significant investment in the integration time. I typically shoot deep exposures over multiple nights, and sometimes I can go on for a couple months if the weather isn't cooperative. And many persons have asked me, since I created this channel, how do I tell when an image has enough integration time? And they've asked if I use signal-to-noise ratio tools to do that. Well, I'll be straight up honest, I never touch signal-to-noise ratio tools. I tried them early on in my work in astrophotography and was profoundly disappointed in them. The reality is, such tools have no idea what we're looking for. They simply use algorithms to assess what they think is a desired target versus noise, and often they do very poorly at this. I remember reading a post by one astrophotographer on the forum Cloudy Nights not long ago, wherein he noted that after setting up his telescope to shoot a DSO, clouds had rolled in, and most of his images from the night turned out not to be the DSO, but the clouds reflecting light pollution. And yet, his SNR tool told him that he had a great signal-to-noise ratio. The tool had simply thought all that light was information, and all that information meant he had a great signal-to-noise ratio. He didn't know that his actual DSO that he meant to shoot was not there at all, and it didn't know that the light pollution was simply undesired signal, which is pretty much what noise is. So I would always argue that the human eye is a far better tool than any SNR application for determining if an image has sufficient exposure time or integration time. So today let's talk about that, how to use your own eye to assess your images and determine if they're done. I'll tell you in advance, this is going to require the step of taking the additional time to develop your image after each night of shooting. But with some practice, this honestly shouldn't take too long. You can set your computer to stack all your information, leave it alone, come back a couple hours later when it's done, and then do a quick development. You don't have to do a full development until you get to the final phase where you've actually determined you have enough integration time. Just a quick developing. In other words, after the data is stacked, deconvolve the stars and sharpen it, stretch the histogram, and maybe do a quick curves or levels adjustment. Just the basics, just get the image developed enough to give you a sense of how far the data can be pushed and if the image is sufficiently information rich at that point. The whole process might take an hour. All right, let's jump in. The image you're seeing right now is the result of the first night of imaging NGC 7000 at a region that I call the chasm. This was shot in the heart of summer at my northern latitude, where nights were only giving, I think, around four and a half hours of astronomical dark, maybe. So, after calling, I was only ending up with about four hours of good integration. When I'm assessing an image to see if it has sufficient integration, one of the things I look for is richness of color, especially in DSOs that should be color rich, like the NGC 7000 region here. As you can see, the color is soft, pastel like a little over harsh and rich without good transitions. And this is because with so little integration time, I had to really force the saturation slider bar at this time, like way over to the other side to pull that much color out of it. So not only is the color soft, but the color is of poor quality. The transitions are too brisk, too harsh, indicating the image lacks integration time. And the fine structure with the image down around here and up here is also soft, fuzzy, not well-defined also indicating the image needs more integration time. But this image was created from only one very short summer night worth of integration, so I expected that. Let's see what happens when I add another night. This image portrays the same DSO, adding about another three and a half hours of integration. Notice the colors are resolving, they're becoming more pure. They're still not where I want them to be and I'm having to force them somewhat, but they are becoming better. There's also more detail resolving quite naturally without having to be forced with tricks, such as duplication of the high frequency layer and re-adding it to the image. That wasn't done in this image at all, and we're getting good detail showing up over here, here, and here. But the upper side and the right side of the image, they're pretty much pitch black, showing virtually no detail. And since I know that's not empty space, I know that there is information there yet to be brought out, and the image needs more integration time. 
and in the darker lower left and lower center regions in the shadowed area, the detail in there is very soft, also indicating more integration time is needed. So let's see what happens when we add about another four hours of integration. The color is now much improved because I didn't have to force it by adding saturation. Though I can tell by looking at the image that the color still needs more integration to fully work it out because it still has that unfortunate soft pastel look to it. But on the positive side, we're starting to see better resolution of the fine detail within the information. In particular, we're starting to see a little bit of distinction in the street or flame-like region right here. It's still soft though, as if not quite fully in focus. More integration will pull that out. Let's go ahead and add the fourth night's integration and see how it transforms this image. This final additional four hours of information was like the final piece in a very complex puzzle. The last bit of additional information needed for the software to be able to finally flesh out the detail and the color adequately within the image. It's evident too, because the image is substantially transformed. There is sharply defined detail all throughout the image now. And the colors have lost that pastel look and now appear more solid, as if they belong there. The colors look like they belong there naturally. They no longer appear forced. So, as far as I'm concerned at this point, the image is finished. Let's review how I made that determination. First of all, fine detail throughout the image is sharply resolved. Look here. And especially this area of flame-like or street gases right up above it. That was an area where the fine detail was soft or dim, not easily brought out. But now that it's clearly and easily distinguished, that tells me the image is now carrying a sufficient amount of integration, hence information. Another thing that I look for in determining whether or not an image is finished is the revelation of detail in the shadow. In this case, the detail could simply be hidden colors beginning to stand out, and just as well, hidden shape in the amorphous forms of the dark shadowed areas. Also, range of color transition is important. When color is forced, colors transition more harshly. But notice, to the right of the image, how softly and gently the red gases fade into the blue background. Right over here and here. Or how the dark shadowed area slowly transformed to a dark gray and then a lighter gray with even a hint of red in some places and a hint of gold in others. And to the blue of the chasm, dead center of the image, there are wisps and tails of dark dust clearly standing out now. Some of them very fine in their resolution, like delicate strands. Now, if I wanted, I could choose to push the integration of this image further, and it would doubtless resolve the detail even more. But for my objective, to create a completely flushed out image that shows the detail and the color in this remarkable region of sky very well, at this point, I consider the goal attained, and the project is complete. And the total integration time for this project is 10 hours and 45 minutes. By the way, that might not sound like much time, especially for most persons who live in areas of light pollution where they have to shoot through narrow band or deal with tri-band filters. I live in a dark sky region and I don't have to worry about that. So this enables me to shoot exclusively LRGB, which is far more efficient than narrow band techniques, whether those are dual or tri-band filters or individual narrow band filters. In terms of efficiency, LRGB integration is worth about three or four times narrow band integration. So that means 10 hours of LRGB integration is worth 30 to 40 hours of narrowband. Which is why there is so much detail presenting in this image with only 10 hours and 45 minutes total exposure. Let's take a look at another deep exposure of DSO that I shot just after I made this one. This is IC1396, which I'm sure most of us know as the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. It's beautiful, striking, and one of the more photographed regions of the night sky. And what you're seeing here is the first night's imaging, which is just under four hours of integration of memory serves. To develop this image with so little information, I had to force it. So we have some detail starting to show through, but it's not well resolved, not very fine, which is an indicator that this image will benefit from more integration time. More integration time should quickly begin to resolve that fine detail. And we can see the colors have been somewhat forced due to their pastel-like appearance. This happens when the saturation has been pushed pretty hard. But as with the previous image, I knew this wasn't going to be the final image. I was willing to push this image as developing a bit harder than usual just to see the potential for the information contained within the data set. And the softness of the pastel colors and the softness of the detail are the major indicators that there is more information to be resolved out of this image and more time on target will do that. Let's go ahead and see what happens after I add another night's worth of integration. 
The second night of imaging added about another three and a half hours of integration, further refining the detail. Both in the main structure of the nebula and in the surrounding nebulosity, over here and over here, and as well down here. The colors are also beginning to take on a more real look, though faded. I didn't push them really hard. Which, to be honest, I actually think looks better than the hypersaturation that is so common in modern astrophotography these days. But there is a problem that really stands out in this part of the image. The space is blotchy. Look over here. While noise doesn't show because I use the noise exterminator, the transitions between light and shadow are sudden, patchy, indicating more integration is needed. Let's see how the image is transformed when a third night of integration is added. Color transitions are becoming smoother, which is good, though the colors still remain pastel-like, indicating more integration time is needed. And the fine structure and the high-frequency information is resolving, though it's still somewhat soft, also indicating the need for more integration. Importantly, however, the patchy blotchiness in the space has much improved. But there is still a little more room for integration to improve the image. So a fourth summer night was committed to imaging this target. Let's take a look at the difference this additional close to four hours made. Perhaps the first thing to take note of is the additional four hours, it made some improvements, but not that much. When adding additional integration time is no longer making a significant improvement, it means that your image has become information rich and you need to consider how much more time you want to invest in the image. You can always make the image a little better by shooting more, but when you're starting to see a few hours of integration time not making that much of an improvement, it means that you need a substantial amount more integration time, hours and hours, to make another substantial improvement. And at that point, one begins to get into the rule of diminishing returns. It'll take more and more hours of integration to achieve less and less improvement. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that less improvement isn't worth it. Great images are built on small improvements, sometimes so small they're almost unnoticeable on their own. But that's a subjective call, one you'll have to make for yourself. And the need to make such subjective calls in determining whether or not an image has enough integration is one of the many reasons for which I shunned SNR tools. They have no way to know what it is that you ultimately want to achieve. So, with the addition of this fourth night of integration, I realized that I had achieved my goals with this image. It was information enough to portray the color solidly, the fine structure well, and to portray the space well, smoothing out the blotchiness and the transitions between dark shadow and darker shadow. Ultimately, pretty much every image that I shoot is a deep exposure. How long it takes to acquire the image, it really depends on how much the weather is going to cooperate. I might be able to gather all the information for an image in just a, a single night in the dead of winter when I have 12 hours of astronomical dark. Or it might take me weeks or months to gather sufficient information during the short nights of summer. But you can be sure that each image is going to get as much telescope time or integration time as it needs to become the best image it can. And the way I determine if the image has sufficient integration is I develop it after every night's shooting and see where the image stands. To recap, the standards that I use to determine if an image is done without using a signal-to-noise ratio tool are as follows. One, I study the colors. If the colors have a soft pastel or watercolor look to them, or if I have to ram up the saturation bar a whole lot to pull them out, then the image does not yet have enough integration time. Two, the fine detail. If I can see that an image looks like it has the promise of very fine structures, such as the cone in the upper part of the Star Queen Nebula that you just saw, or the wizard over here on the right of the Wizard Nebula, if that looks somewhat soft, blurry, or amorphous, it too indicates the image needs more integration time. The addition of a little saturation is okay, but colors should appear rich and solid on their own. And likewise, fine structure should show the promise of detail within it and should be easily brought out with some basic developing. Something like, for example, the use of a non-additive AI-based sharpening tool such as the Blur Exterminator, as well as the application of older sharpening tools such as an unsharp mask, clarity tool, or high-pass filter. Those things should bring out the sharpness to fine detail easily without having to force it. Also of note, I'm looking for detail in the dark space, such as all the dark areas surrounding NGC 7129 here. Notice the ripples and structure and the folds within the shadow of the dark nebulosity surrounding this lovely blue nebula. It was on night 5 that that really became visible, which told me that this image was at last done. And in black space, where there is no nebulosity, no structure, no detail to really pull out, the space itself should look clear, free of noise, and not blotchy. This means that enough information has been acquired that, 
you might think of it as the stacking software understands that's dark space. There shouldn't be blotchiness there. There shouldn't be uncertainty there. So noise doesn't go into those areas. In other words, even if you were photographing the pitch black of the darkest space, more integration time is going to give you better space. Ultimately, when an image portrays clear space, rich color, and fine detail without forcing any of it, the image is sufficiently integration rich and you can consider integration done. Thank you for watching and I hope that answers your questions on how to tell if an image is sufficiently integrated without the use of SNR tools. I don't exactly have anything against SNR tools, I just, I think we're often over-reliant on these things and we don't often realize how dumb these tools are. SNR tools are just an algorithm. They don't know what we're looking at and they don't know what we want. So ultimately, we have to use our eyes. Our eyes, our human perception is the ultimate guide to whether an astrophotography image has reached the place of sufficient integration and is finally complete. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, or observations. Just type it in the comment section below. Now have a blast doing astrophotography and get out there and shoot the sky.